Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna see how to easily create these vintage effects that you can see in here using Adobe Photoshop. All right, so let's go and open Photoshop and then I'm gonna press Control Command N to create a new document. And let's change the width to 4,500 and maybe 3,000 in the width. I think I will put 300 in the resolution for this and hope it's okay. All right, now we'll go and open the image I want to use. So we'll just take it and drag it like that. Maybe rename it to base. And then I'll right click and convert it to smart object. And let's delete this background. All right, so we're gonna apply some adjustments in this base layer. So the first thing I want to do is to desaturate this or to turn it to black and white. And to do that, we're going to go to image, adjustment and choose. You can go either hue saturation or black and white. For me, I think I will go for hue saturation and I will put minus 100 for the saturation and I'm going to press OK. All right, so now we have black and white image. So we'll just take this and delete it very quick. Next, I want to apply uh, a filter from the filter galleries, but I always like to change the colors to the default before I do that. So I'm just gonna press D on my keyboard to change the background and foreground color to the default. So now I'll go to filter and choose filter galleries. And the filter I want to use is in the distort folder and it's called diffuse glow. So I will keep the greenness set to 4, maybe I will put up the glow amount a little bit, 3, and maybe 16 for the clear amount. Or you know, you can go ahead and experiment with this, it's up to you. For me, I think I will keep it like that, and I will press OK. Next, I want to apply color halftone, and to do that, I will go to filter, pixelate, and I will choose color halftone. Now, again, you can go ahead and experiment with this. For me, I want the halftone to be smaller. So I'm just going to keep the radius to 4. And when it comes to the channel, we can just play around with them. For me, I would keep 108, 162, 90, and 45. And I hope it's okay. Now, if I zoom in, you can see our halftones. They have colors and everything. But... I think I want them to be blended better with the image and to do that you can actually use the blending mode that which will only affect the color halftone by double click on this adjustment that is in the front or align with the color halftone and this will op open the blending mode options that is for the color halftone. For me I will change the blending mode of it to soft light and I will maybe put down the opacity to like 70 or maybe even 60 and hope it's okay all right so almost done now the only thing i want to do which is optional i want to maybe give that faded look to the image so we'll go to image adjustment and i think i will go for levels and i will play with the output levels from the black point and the white and this will affect uh, the white and the black shadows the light I mean and the shadows yeah some, something like that you can see the before and after maybe a little bit down in here and a little bit up in here and that would be okay all right so the last thing I want to do is to add a vignette and to do that I will go to filter and then I will go to lens correction and choose custom and down in here you can actually add a very quickly a vignette maybe for me minus 60 and the whip is okay all right as you can see this is our base effect so now i want to add a little bit of color of that sepia kind of color that it looks a little bit vintagey and to do that i will create a solid color and i will choose this yellowish color Maybe, yeah, something like that. And I will press OK. 
and then I will put it below my base layer and then I will select the base layer and I will add a layer mask and now I'm going to press B to turn to my brushes and I have 100% opacity and 4% in the flow with a normal soft round brush and using black as my foreground color I will start coloring in the edges in here to give it this really nice vintage edges in here or maybe a little bit dirty with age to get a little bit older like that then maybe a little bit more in here and a little bit in this area all right i think it looks really cool now you can go stronger if you want but for me i think i'm happy with that all right now we're gonna start adding our texture so we'll go and open texture one and by the way you will find this texture down in the link from the description below so you can download them if you want and while you are there make sure to subscribe and comment if you are not already a subscriber all right so i will open the first texture and make it bigger to fit now because we have a black texture we're gonna change the color mode to screen and then I will go and open this paper texture in here. And for this one, I will change it to overlay. And the last one, it will be screen because it's black. All right, so I will keep it like that. And then I will change the color mode of it to screen. All right, now you can keep it like that if you want. But for me, I think I want to add a little bit of a rounded border to this just you know to make something different from the last vintage effects that i did so to do that i will go actually and choose the rounded rectangle tool in here and i have the radius set to 150 pixels because of the resolution of this document so i will go from this top left corner and i will one click and drag just like that Maybe I will move it a little bit more to have a little bit of space. Yeah, something like that. I don't need to be that accurate. All right. Now I'm not going to use this uh, actually for this. I'm just going to load the selection of this rounded border. So I will press Ctrl or Command. And while I'm pressing it, I will one click. And this actually will load the selection of this rectangle. And I will delete it. Then I will create a new layer and I will name it border. Now I will go to select and choose inverse. And then I will fill this selection with white. So I'm just going to press X on my keyboard to, to make white as my foreground color. And then I'm going to press Alt or Option backspace. And then Ctrl Command D to deselect. And there we go. We have our white round border. Now I will go to filter and choose blur and then Gaussian blur I will keep the pixels set to 5 and I will press OK now to make it blend better with the image uh, I don't think it will be good for a vintage image to have this straight line so to make it a little bit more not straight you can use the smudge tool and just go and make it a little bit like this just to have that you know old kind of feel to the image I mean this is optional but for me I think it adds a little bit of a good touch to the whole thing especially in this area all right all right I think it looks okay Alright, so you can stop in here if you want, but maybe you can add uh, one more adjustment for this. So I will go and add maybe a color lockup. And let's choose something warmer. Maybe this crisp warm. I think it will look really cool. But I think it's a little bit strong, so I'm just going to put down the opacity to like minus or not minus like 20 percent all right i think this is really cool 
And yeah, so I hope that you enjoy and you like this tutorial and it was a little bit helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe and comment and you know where for more to come. And have a nice day. Thank you for watching.